students today's class will be focusing on amino glycosides so what are amino glycosides they are amino sugars that are linked glycosidically already we have come across the word glycoside so what is glycoside it is having two parts one is a sugar part another one is non sugar part and that two are connected by means of glycosidic linkage or ether linkage now we'll see what is meant by glucoside already we have known about glycoside that glycoside is having sugar no that sugar is a glucose means that can be called as glucoside now we'll see amino glycosides that sugar is connected with amino group so that is an amino sugar means that glycoside can be called as amino glycoside and it is having amino cyclitol moiety in that moiety only the amino sugars are linked glycosidically so we'll see what is meant by amino cyclitol that is having a carbon cycle that is a ring that is having only carbon and that is connected with amino group so that can be called as amino cyclitol that's why the amino glycosides are otherwise called as amino cyclitol antibiotics here we'll see what is the ring present in in the case of amino cyclitol so here that one is 13 diamino cyclohexane so that is the central ring present in amino glycoside now we'll see the central ring present in amino glycoside so in the case of streptomycin the central ring is stripped in in the case of neomycin gentamicin kenamycin tobramycin that may be deoxy streptamine now the amino glycosides no that is having poly basic amino groups and that are linked to two two or more amino sugars by means of a glycosidic linkage or ether linkage here most of them are having sugar no that that is amino hexose but some has pentose the examples for that are streptomycin neomycin and paramomycin the prototype of amino glycoside is gentamicin it is of natural and semi synthetic origin now we'll see the classification of amino glycosides that would be classified into two types one is systemic use another one is topical use examples under systemic use streptomycin cisomycin tobramycin amikacin nettlemycin gentamicin and kenamycin and for topical use they are neomycin and framomycin The amino glycosides again would be classified based on the source into mycins and mycins. If it is obtained from the genus Streptomyces, means they are called mycins, and from Micromonospora genus means they are called mycins. And we'll see the examples under mycins: Streptomycin, Kenamycin, Neomycin, Paramomycin, Tobramycin. Under mycins, the examples are Gentamycin, Amikacin, Nettlemycin, Vedamycin, Astromycin. We should not confuse that one with Uh, that one with uh, thromycin they are if it is ending with thromycin means that is the macrolide it is also ending with mycin but this is not with mycin with thromycin if it is ending with thromycin that is the macrolide already we have seen macrolides you know the examples are erythromycin clarithromycin dirithromycin azithromycin etc now we'll see the mechanism of action of amino glycosides here there may be two steps we'll see step 1 in step 1 there may be transport of amino glycosides through the bacterial cell wall and cytoplasmic membrane here the amino glycosides first penetrate the cell membrane through the porin channels they are the aqueous pores okay after penetrating this they reach periplasmic space then by means of active transport it enters into the cytoplasmic membrane that was mediated by electron transport chain and this penetration is dependent on the maintenance of polarized membrane and that was maintained by oxygen here the penetration is activated by increasing the ph if it is an alkaline ph the penetration is 20 times more than the top acidic ph already we said it is oxygen dependent so it works on aerobic organisms if it is an anaerobic condition they do not work on the bacteria now we'll see step 2 step 2 is binding to ribosomes resulting in inhibition of protein synthesis before that first we'll see what is meant by ribosome so all ribosomes know they are important for protein synthesis they are the minute particles consisting of rnas and associated proteins they bind to mrna and trna to synthesize polypeptides and proteins okay now there may be two types of ribosomes one is 70s another one is 80s 70s is present in prokaryotes whereas 80s is present in eukaryotes 70s is having two subunits 30s subunits 30s and 50s 
whereas eukaryotes no that is having two sub i mean ats no that is having two subunits 40 s and 60 s here s yes, no that is indicating swedberg swedberg unit so uh, swedberg constant so inside the bacterial cell the amino glycosides no that is binding with 30s ribosomal subunits to form a complex that complex cannot initiate the proper amino acid polymerization and leads to failure of specific amino acyl rnas to recognize the proper codons on mrna and that leads to misreading mutations of the genetic code this causes incorporation of improper amino acid into the peptide chain finally the entire protein synthesis is inhibited by amino glycosides now we'll see the general properties of amino glycosides they are poorly absorbed after oral administration that's why they can be given only parenterally and unable to cross blood brain barrier so they cannot be used for the treatment of meningitis unless they are injected directly into the cns and they have bactericidal action except spectinomycin and they have narrow margin of sa safety and we'll see the side effects it is ototoxic nephrotoxic and neuromuscular blockade we'll see the contraindications of amino glycosides in the case of pregnancy and it should not be combined with any other ototoxic or nephrotoxic drugs examples are nsaids vancomycin amphotericin b cyclosporin it should not be combined with local anesthetics or skeletal muscle relaxant because it leads to paralysis it should be cautiously taken in elderly patients because of kidney damage and it should not be combined with any other drug in the same syringe or in infusion bottle other points we'll see in next class